It's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Cataruza. Now, I'm watching this morning, and there is this thing somewhere in the scholar world or educated world where they're like, it just spoke to me. Great. So this morning, teleportation's just speaking to me. Of course, this is how I was born with the yellow and gold, uh, I'm sorry, gold and blue headdress. That was my genetic, still is, that doesn't go away. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, who is speaking on Drew's show this morning? Listen to the story. Now, I'm just curious, all other languages other than American English and the morons that have been... See, somewhere in the world, there's a foosball table of men that are supposed to be on one stick. And when it gets turned, they all have their leg out and kick the one ball, no matter whose foot it touches... They all hit the same way. There's a whole bunch of different sticks, and when you turn them, the men's legs kick the one ball, whether it touches their foot or not, in the same effing direction until they score a goal, and there's no other player on the other side. So you just keep turning the sticks until the ball goes through the goal line because there's no opposing team. So now here we are this morning, and in broad daylight, they're explaining the different, they had to come up with a new word for what they did to me in 1997 that threw me off rails. So they come up with this, it's, if it's not ghosting, what is it? Well, here's what they came up with in their dumb, useless humans of things that we shouldn't have to explain to the Americans or to management because leadership should be on a foosball stick and should have gotten my part right. Hence, the painting from circa 1600 with a headdress. dating terms. She's with something called sex in the city. Fucking disgusting. It's hard to keep track. Now Elite Daily reports that there's a word for when you get all dressed up, hair done, makeup ready, dressed to the nines, only to have your date text and cancel. It's Here's the thing. My date in 1997 didn't text, didn't send me a beep for a beeper so I could call him back. He just didn't show up. What did show up? Where he sent me, no less. I said, I'll just go home and I'll just wait for you if you have a meeting. It's no big deal. I don't want to go out. No, no, no. You get your hair done. Put your, like, get dressed up for me. Put makeup on. I want you to go to Crazy Donkey with Janice or wherever Janice is taking you. Go out with the, the girl and meet, wait for me. So I did. And what shows up? This ugly man from Levittown. What happens? He sits next to me. I tell him I'm not interested. I said, I'm waiting for my boyfriend. I am not interested. I'm, I'm with someone. That's it. I don't even want to talk. Like, really, I don't even want to talk to you. But he sits there and he just, whatever. Then he's following me around dance floor. Well, it's like, uh, um, uh, whatever. I'm trying, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting, I'm watching the door. I'm sitting by myself watching the door because I don't want to be there. I don't like Janice. I don't like anything that showed up. And all I want to do is be home and safe with tall and handsome. So let's just see, and this was it from Hofstra. So that happens. So now, 43, four, three decades now or two decades now into the future, I have some TV show with some disgusting sex in the city because now women think that this is all just appropriate and, like, normal, 
Not my normal, but whatever. You've been messing my part up since I got here. This is how they explain it. Bamboozled. <laughs> That's cute. And a dating survey says that 58% of daters say they've been glamboozled. Why am I even dating? I am built for someone. Why is that person not present and claiming who I am and that we should be together? Why am I sent out into this disgusting Sex and the City clown show as if I'm a nobody? Why is that? Just curious, all area human. A good rule of thumb is if you haven't heard from him an hour before the date, hold on. So now I'm supposed to listen to stupid giving me advice about their stupid system. Is that how humanity runs? Because it sure looks that way. Off on those lashes. <laughs> now, the question is, have either one of you been glamboozled? Or have you been the glamboozler? No, try it. You try, you try to glamboozle me, you better show up with a receipt. This is like human right. banter. I really yeah. couldn't give two craps less about. No one's going to admit. Did somebody admit that? Yes, you did. I love it. Great. So now what's the response? Why might he not have shown up? As if it fucking matters. You have a microphone and a camera coming to you. Aren't you so glad you raised your hand, sir? <laughs> why, ah, why did you glamboozle someone? I got nervous and scared. Great, so you got nervous and scared, didn't have the balls to show up. And then I get raped. Then I'm forced to carry the kid, and here we are. So now there's a war in Ukraine. There's a war with Russia. I'm still in the Empire State. They're still as horrible at managing the shit show as ever. And this is what, and now there's past administrations, past executives, there's past meetings between MLB, all of these really like non-essential equipment areas, if they're not able to all get on the same stick and move at the same time. The moon went missing four days ago. Now, today will be the fifth at night when I can check it again. It's a big cosmological oops on the part of humans. Now, this is real life, non-essential equipment that are telling the story of the state of the economy within the U.S. of America. I'm in the North American continent. I live worse than the story they're about to explain in their nothingness. They at least have a toehold into the economic world where they actually have jobs, careers, income. He might have to work three jobs, but at least he has one. And at least she has a husband. I have two pieces of toilet paper with two people I consider rapists, stalkers, whatever. Nothing important, that's for sure. You'd think the last time you guys would be here, it'd be great. But this is probably the worst that I've ever been. Even as President Biden... So, state of the economy when President Joe Biden gets to the U.S. Already, it's he's, he's entering a failed system. Let's just be really clear. It's been failing for over four decades. Right now, for Linda, it's been failing her for seven it says many Americans feel the ec economic strain of soaring consumer costs. Here's what I don't un understand. All those focus groups, all those pollsters, why aren't they dead? They're not reporting the results right. The future isn't getting corrected. Touts his economic record. After my first year as president, the United States had the fastest economic growth in nearly four decades. People... Bullshit. People like Gabe are still far from recovery. How do you think the Biden administration's doing? I don't see it working for us. I don't. We don't see it. You want to, after the last administration, you want to be like... Real people, real situation, really where are things at? 
really it's here and my situation's worse than what he has. He has something to report. Uh, yay. They're helping us and they made all these promises. And then there's the assholes inside of these like focus groups and they're like, but what did we get right? Nothing. You got nothing right for four decades. I am certain upon that. And then you just see everything going down the tubes. Go ahead. Two full years now into the pandemic, Gabe's career hasn't bounced back. And even with his wife, Claudia, earning income as a property manager, the Annels recently had to make the difficult decision to ask relatives for help. It's embarrassing. I don't like it. I don't like it. And Claudia fears the rest of the... You know what asking my relatives for help was? They sold everything that I had, kept the money, they threw the rest of my, like, life's treasures out on the front, they shipped my three kids off to the rapist's house, and they stuck me in a room that's 120 square feet. They then kept getting phone calls from outside help and rehab specialists and started sending me and locking me up in psychiatric wards. I really think your humanity's fucking disgusting. The rest of the country has already moved on. It's just a long time. And people are tired. And I don't think people or the government or anybody is really all that worried about how people are getting by anymore. You rack your brain for an explanation for why two years in you're at a financial low point. What do you come up with? Uh, definitely no assistance for a time when this country definitely needs help. More than 72 million Americans say they are struggling to pay their expenses, a number that's actually grown by... And then when help is given to the country... It gets redistributed to all the shitbags that don't deserve it and aren't supposed to be here. So we're clear. About 2 million people a month since last August. And it's not hard to understand why. With inflation at a fresh 40-year high, the average American family is paying an extra $250 every month just to live like they used to. Pretty much everything's going up, but not our, not our pay. <laughs> Not our pay. Some of us don't even have pay. Some of us were never even given a job, a stipend, a pension, or goals to strive for. For some of us, there weren't even goals offered to try to strive for. We were just written off the page completely. So missing that first husbandry where he was just too nervous to show up or whatever stupid excuse he has is unacceptable. So, you, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to not be mad. The family had been getting by thanks to the government's stimulus checks and extended unemployment benefits. And when we spoke to them a year into the pandemic, Claudia in particular felt seen and supported. I don't feel as... Now, this is a year after that first time, March 21st, 2021. For me, it still is just as bad as it was before. Skeptical, as I did last year. Because last year, I just really felt like, wow, we're just going to be in an island, you know? But this year, I feel like, okay, I think the government... Interesting choice of words. The government is hearing us and trying to get somewhere. But now those benefits are gone. And like so many other middle-class families, the Annels have had to cut back. Don't go out anymore. Drive as least amount as possible, because gas prices are insane. I don't even have access to my car anymore. I walk on foot, and there's nowhere to go. Oil prices for the house, not doubled, but pretty close. Wow. So, you know, now we're very, very, very frugal. What about food? Like we told our son, no more snacks. <laughs> And all of the essentials now, you know? Odd jobs like seasonal delivery driver and garage attendant have helped, but only some. Seventeen fifty an hour full-time job is not going to pay any bills. It's not going to pay anything. You know, it's only going to help if you have another job on top of that. And even with occasional freelance audio work that pays much, much better, the family is falling behind. Definitely all credit card payments are not happening. Credit card payments are just not happening They're at all. They're just not going to happen right now. Yeah. Not even the minimum. No. If you have no money, how do you pay the minimum? 
So whatever is accumulating on that credit report, kill all of the people that want to prosecute on that credit report, any kind of judgment, because they're part of the bigger problem. It was known there's a new war being fought by foot in physicality and in figurative based on all of their bad decisions and based on the fact that they want to hold me to some cross like Jesus, je suis les enfants. I can't even meet the minimum because I'm prioritizing for car payments, mortgage payments, oil payments, gasoline to get to these jobs. Gabe is still hopeful his old job will bounce back eventually. But until it does, the Annels, like so many other families, are in a state of economic and emotional distress. It makes me angry. It makes me feel... What's the State of the Union? Well... We had the woman who was part of the most crucial, Eckstein, the capstone part of the union. We had her raped. We had her drugged. We had her thrown into a horrific, like, downward spiral. We totally put people in her path, dragged her into weird underground sex parties where she had to go hide in a room until she, the rest of the people were ready to leave. Because she didn't want to be part of it. She didn't want to witness it. We've had her dressed up, put in a cage, taken photos of it to blackmail others. Let's see. Anything else that I should admit you've all done while you're in your cushy jobs somewhere in Washington and elsewhere? Defeated. Um, and it's hard to watch my husband go through it because he is a very very intelligent person. He's a very capable person. He's a hard worker. Um, I, at this point, have no husband. Whoever I was built for is, I'm assuming, fighting for me from some other side. So we can meet in the middle. And it's just unfair to have everything just sort of taken away. When we first spoke to you, you thought maybe this would be over in three months, maybe six, nine months was something that was being floated. Did you ever in a million years think we'd be here two years later? No, as a matter of fact, we were very hesitant about doing this because we were like, do people really want to keep hearing about how terrible everyone's doing? You know, it, it felt like... It's weird because I don't ever hear them on the television talk from this type of microphone about just how bad management's doing in previous administrations and executives. Kicking a horse while it's down kind of thing. And we decided, yeah, because it's important because maybe people don't realize it's still happening. Maybe people are in their own bubble and feeling like everything's hunky-dory now and it's not. So it's, it's definitely not, as a matter of statistical fact, hunky-dory right now. So right. the census numbers were like one in three families struggling to pay their bills. Our poll out this morning says most Americans are concerned about paying their bills. And it's all about where you started, and you're trying to hold on to where you were. Right. So he's saying 1750 is not paying his bills. For someone else, that's good enough. Right. He's sliding down the economic ladder, and he's afraid. And a lot of Americans have that fear right now. Here's where I was two years ago, and I'm dying to hold on, and I feel myself sliding back. And, yeah. and some of us have fallen off the ladder completely that there's not even like a subcategory in subservient and subversion for us to even platform from. Because management and the administration the ex are always trying to make themselves look the best. Right, yeah, that kind of goes counterintuitive to what actually is. And it's scary. It's relative to your financial circumstance, but I'm slipping. I'm and it slipping. feels like I'm drowning yeah. right now in the deep end. Exactly. I can understand their frustration and pain, especially if you hear the Biden administration. Here's the voice of people who play along because they have something to lose. Here's someone who was already fucked over so bad, there's nothing. That you've taken everything. And I'm such a critical part. They knocked the moon out of like orbit, out of like the night sky, just to prove to humans how far off the mark they are. Administration safe. I have a sun, moon, and stars contract. I see the Orion's constellation. I see no moon in the night sky. They're better. 
you know, that the economy's on the upswing, things are better. So I admire the fact that he said we, we were reluctant to do it. And, then we- and the sun is at such a high, I don't know, veracity, such a high phenomenon that when I go out, it's at such a blinding photon level that it is like, it's damaging to the eye, to the eye equipment, the eye gear. Hence, I'm wearing glasses that's due to pressurized pressure being off but sub to that it doesn't help that it's so bright everywhere even the lights that they put in the rooms and on the ambulances and on the cop cars i mean they're tactical lighting to stun and disorient you in new york city but then we thought no we really need to tell people there are still a lot of people in trouble a lot and a lot of people still even if your wages went up if inflation is higher than your wages you actually got a pay cut yeah. What's his original job, audio? He was an audio engineer for or these events. big corporate events, and they haven't bounced back. Although I will say the company that he used to work for hired one of the two workers back, so he may get some good news in the days ahead. We'll Oops. see. We're hoping. Yeah. Or another company. Yeah. Or another company. Yeah. A lot of people can identify with that yeah. family. These are stories that we need to hear. Yeah. Uh, speaking of stories that we need to hear, Vlad Dutier, he's coming up next with the talk of the table. We'll actually know what to watch. Yeah. Um, but here's a reminder. You can always get the morning's news before. So there's the real story behind what are all of the idiots speaking about on the idiot box or the boob tube or what messages from culmination of jambalaya that the U.S. has been working on with America. It's coming through clear as, a, uh, clear as day. I'm just, they started the conversation and I'm just updating you with where I'm at and how I've been affected by all of their ineffective communication and management skills and their ineffective participation in something that is really harmful and dangerous. Star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Ketteruza. It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken. It's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.